from the earliest days of the church, as far back as the, the witnesses of those, those first shepherds in the field and the magi, and even the witness of the animals in that barn who first saw God becoming human in Jesus in Bethlehem. Christians have wondered, what does all of this mean? Was the first Noel just another birth of a baby to an unwed teenager in a backwater of the empire? Or was it just the arrival of another mouth to feed and a body to protect from the world's peril? And peril there would be soon enough. Or has something even more amazing and awe-inspiring happened? Something so cosmic and universal in scope that nothing was the same afterward. There is history before the birth of Christ, and there is all that comes after. And there is eternity, God's own gathering of all time in an eternal present. This year, my Christmas prayer is that you and I, all of us, see the birth of God in humanity is about all humankind, even all creation. God's love and grace has entered our hearts. That presence of love and the means of our redemption is implanted in every body, in everything. Whether we accept the birth of the Christ child or not, whether we are ready or not, whether this world chooses to love in peace or not, God's love will not be hindered or prevented. It is here, and it is so eager for us to come and adore him. Christmas changes what it means to be a human being. You and I are not merely a collection of atoms and molecules and cells, but we are infused with the presence of God. One ancient theologian thought of it this way. Imagine a piece of iron resting in a hot fire. Once it heats up, you can't really distinguish between the fire and the iron. They become one and the same. That's what happens because of the birth of Christ. The light of God's love the power of God's own presence comes into the humble stables of our lives. So there is no place, no thought, no regret or sin, no part of our lives, however bright or bleak, where God is absent. God is everywhere, even here, right now, even in the most pain-stricken places of this broken earth. It is out of this awareness of God's choosing to dwell and glow in our lives, even in our struggles and shadows and stresses, that I pray this prayer that comes to us from the ancient church, and it is the prayer of the second Sunday or the first Sunday of Christmas, which prays, Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word in Jesus. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. With my most heartfelt prayer and wish, wishes for a holy and cheerful Christmas and a new year full of the hope of God's deep peace, Merry Christmas.